<laughs> 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 yeah. By the way, it would be good to introduce our guest, S. Marshall Wilson, former delegate in the state, now candidate for uh, governor once again. You yes, ran sir. before on the ACT party. Well, actually, it was the Independent Party of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. I was their candidate. Uh, we earned more than 1% of the vote, according, actually almost 2% of the vote, over 15,000 votes. And according to West Virginia law, any party whose, go- cabin- uh, whose candidate for governor earns 1% or more of the total vote, therefore has uh, ballot access for the next four years. So uh, the Independent Party of West Virginia applied for their ballot access, and the Republican uh, Secretary of State and the Republican Attorney General got together and decided that that was not true in our case because the name of the party was independent party so uh and they wrote us a letter that said they were denying us ballot access according to west virginia law because apparently if the name of your party is not something they like then the law doesn't apply to you they said because it's the independent party the people who voted for wilson didn't know if they were voting for a uh an unaffiliated candidate or if they were voting for the candidate for a party so it doesn't count for that party that's interesting. It's yeah, interesting. So equivocation. We were talking about that. Yes. So interesting is a way to to describe it, I suppose. Would would that stand up to a legal challenge? I don't know. I can't afford an attorney because I spent all my money taking Jim Justice to the Supreme Court of Appeals, and then also to federal court where uh, the Republican Attorney General sent people to explain to the uh, the judges in those cases that I'm a lunatic who just makes stuff up because I like attention. So they both threw the, the cases out of court. That, uh, that doesn't sound like a strong legal argument. <laughs> You're a lunatic well, who just likes attention. <laughs> well, you have to understand that's the way things work around here. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, and and, and that, that leads us into what's going on in Jefferson County right now. You guys probably know about the county commission over there. Uh, you've got Jennifer Krause and Tricia Jackson. Jennifer's run for re-election to the county commission, and, and Tricia Jackson is running for uh, state auditor. And the two of them have tried with everything that's in them, all courses of action they could possibly develop to slow down some of the corrupt things that are going on in Jefferson County. They've been uh, completely bulldozed by the members of the uh, the county commission, specifically Steve Stolifer, who leads that commission. And finally, they determined that the only way that they could stop what was going on there, the, uh, the bulldozing of the principals, of, uh, of good governance that were taking place in Jefferson County. The only way they could do that was basically to go on strike. So the two of them have refused to show up at county commission hearings, thereby depriving the commission of a quorum, which means they can't do any business at all. And then, of course, Steve Stolifer and uh, the uh, uh, Jefferson County prosecutor took them to court yesterday mm-hmm. and uh, tried to have them removed. Well, actually, the process is to start here and then take them before a three-judge panel. And effectively, the judge in this case uh, looked at the prosecutor and said two things that I found very, very interesting, interesting in in the way that you're using it. Uh, First of all, he said, you know, the law is very clear. The process here is that a number of citizens have to sign a petition to bring these, uh, these two commissioners up for consideration to be removed. Can you show me your petition? And he said, I don't have one. I'm the prosecutor. And uh, the judge said, oh, well, that's not what the law says. The law says you need a petition with a certain number of signatures on Mm -hmm. it from citizens. The second thing is, he said, I don't understand your charges here. Can you explain them? And as far as I can tell, uh, there was no real explanation given for the charges. So uh, apparently that's going up to a a senior judge, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. But uh, I I appreciate you recapping that yesterday because I didn't have any updates on that case now of course so, and, you know, and matt's not here today right um uh, but i but i don't want to give uh too much time to that because i want to talk about your campaign for well, governor I appreciate that. um you. and in addition to that uh, i've invited kraus and jackson on the program and they've declined so i don't want to i don't want to have a person speak for them when they won't speak for themselves no so of they course not and to I w- speak for themselves yes sir and i want to be clear they didn't send me here i just happened to be at the at the meeting yesterday and yeah and i know i know you're passionate about their cause and you support what they're doing i'm passionate about good governance yeah. I'm passionate about constitutional governance and natural rights, which leads me to this your campaign. Example which leads me issue. to your campaign Thank for you. governor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. Yeah, right. you, you're always great at curbing me and bringing me back around. I appreciate that. Uh, you're not as good as Julie is, but thank you. Well, uh, I, I would never compete with the. the she's a captain now, <laughs> not a commander. Right. She's a retired captain. Yeah. Yes. Right. So uh, uh, my name is Marshall Wilson. I'm the Constitution Party candidate for governor of West Virginia. I'm a retired combat veteran, U.S. Army infantry officer. I was a missionary in the Amazon jungle. I was a church planner. 
planner and a theology professor. I have nine kids. Not real sure how that happened, but uh, you know, maybe I'll figure it out one day. There are books written about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read very well. Well, no, as a missionary, you've adopted many uh, children. Well, I've adopted two. Mm -hmm. They're twins from Peru. I. Uh, uh, I had a talk with their biological mother while she was pregnant, uh, offered to support her through her pregnancy because she planned on having an abortion. And ultimately, that discussion about how best to support her ended with me saying, well, I will adopt your child. And I already had seven, and I was a missionary living on donations, so uh, uh, that was pretty rough. But uh, it was the only way to save the child's life. And then, uh, of course, she had twins, which is awesome. They're, they're and, fantastic. And, and Joe is one of those. Yes. And yes. I, I met Joe. You brought Joe in with you a couple of years ago. Josiah and Hadassah, and Joe prefers to be, Josiah prefers to be called Joe. Yeah. And they are now students at, uh, they're juniors at uh, Musselman High School. And Joe is known as the uh, the mayor of Musselman because he is the, the friendliest guy on the planet and he everybody is. loves him. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, when he, he was named as a member of the homecoming court, as a homecoming prince, a few weeks ago, he got a standing ovation and this rousing hoorah. It was kind of neat. But... Um, I hold a master's degree in national security from the Institute of World Politics. Uh, I, my studies were focused on the devolution of free society.